Last week, um, I was talking about uh, um, talking about Jesus and how He brings peace. And today, I said that I was going to speak on joy, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. He brings joy. Now, I think uh, I think we sometimes have a kind of a misrepresentation of what joy is. Uh, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about that as we go along. But, you know, uh, the thing about joy is that when you go and you walk around and you see people, not everybody's going to have joy. But let me tell you who should have joy. Every Christian ought to have joy. Because that is a gift from God. And, uh, you know, as a, as a Christian, I, you know, I, I think... Uh, I think as we get older and we mature in the Lord, I think we start to understand more and more what joy is and what it means. But I think where joy shines the most, of course we notice it when things go our way, good things happen, of course we notice it then. But what about when things are not going our way? What about when things are not as they should be? That's when joy shines the most. And I think, you know, it, it, it dawned on me this morning like a light. That in the scripture we're going to look at today. That there was a need for joy. And so, if you would, let's, let's stand together. We're going to read the scripture today uh, from Luke chapter 2. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone on around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much today for Christ the Lord, for coming into this dark world to give us light. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice of leaving your throne in glory to come here in this dirty, dark world. Lord, we are forever grateful and thank you for coming and doing what you did and for coming back one day. Lord, we thank you and we are grateful and we love you. Lord, be with us today as we Meditate on this word that you've given us. Lord, let us relish it. Let us revel in it. Lord, let us be grateful for it. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Now, of course, we know. I mean, I, I, I would assume that we know how all this works out because... Um, I think a lot of us think think most people in here that I've heard um, that I've talked to and gotten to know I think a lot of us have grown up in church so you know as you grow up in church you you hear Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2 an awful lot um, but you know it's something that every year it never gets old you know there's some scriptures that we that sometimes we run into and say oh that's a little new and fresh um, and we don't read them very often. But this is one that we, you know, a lot of us, we could, if we really thought about it, we could probably, you know, maybe not word for word, but we could probably recite most of it and get pretty close because we've heard it so much. But, you know, there's, it's never dull. And I think the longer you are a Christian, the more you appreciate and love this scripture. Because the Savior of the world, this is the recording of the Savior of the world coming into the world. How precious that is 
not just for us, but for all peoples. And every time we read this, it should bless our heart and make us love Him even more. Because the older we are, the more we mature in Christ, the more we see sin in the world and how much the world needed Jesus and how much the world needs Him now. Which brings me to joy. Don't you think this world needs some joy? It absolutely does. Now there was a, I'm not going to give you the whole backstory here because you already know it, but I just want to kind of talk about where, where the Israelites were, where the Jewish people were at this time. They were in a pretty dark place. Now granted, they had, they had an established religious system once again. They had a temple um, that was beautified uh, and uh, very ornately uh, decorated by someone other than themselves. So they, you know, they, they, got, a, um, they got an upgrade uh, as far as decorations is concerned by, uh, by a pagan king. So they had this grand place to worship. They had, this, uh, they had the scriptures. They had no shortage of Pharisees and scribes and priests who were able to you know, go in the temple and uh, there's some estimates that there were upwards of uh, 20,000 plus priests uh, who were in the service of, the, uh, of the, the temple. Of course, they didn't all serve at the same time. They, they had all these rotating things uh, where they figured out who would serve on what day and when. And so they had all this figured out, but they had all of these things that should have been going for them. But they were going against themselves. And not realizing what they had. They had something that the pagan people around them didn't have. They had a God to look to, a real one. See, all these other uh, kingdoms around them, they, they served any number of gods, false gods. You know, I mean, any god but the true God is a false god, but they served all these different gods. But the Jewish people, they had the true and living God. They actually had a history to look back on. They had a legacy to live on and to live up to. So you would think this, this people who had all this going for them, you would think that they had joy in their life. But they didn't. The religious system was very oppressive to the people, which in turn led the people to not have too much joy. And when you look at where the Israelites had come from, the Israelites were not only being oppressed by uh, the, the Babylonians and then the Greeks, or the Persians, the Greeks, and then the Romans, they were being oppressed by their own leaders. And so they were in a dark place. I think spiritually. And they needed a light. It had been a long time since a prophet had spoken for God. And last week we talked about Zechariah. Zechariah's prayer and his song proclaiming about his own son that would lead the way and prepare the way for the one who was to come. But not only that, he was proclaiming that the Savior was coming. Finally, he was coming. And so when we get here to Luke, knowing that these people were in a dark place, they, they were just oppressed, they were not happy, and they did not have joy. Joy and happiness are totally two different things. And I want to explain the difference. So to understand how Jesus brings joy. Happiness is generally something that we receive when we get something we want. 
something goes our way, when we get a gift or something like that. But joy is something that we have. We can receive happiness in a number of ways, but you only receive joy by knowing Jesus Christ. He is joy. He brings joy, just like peace. Not everybody is guaranteed peace. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know peace. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know joy, because He is the source of joy. Now let me put this in a different light so maybe you'll understand it this way. Every person in here could describe a time in your life after you become a Christian where things weren't going your way, uh, life was not as it should be, uh, maybe you were being oppressed yourself by your job, a marriage, or a taxation, or any number of things that we could think of that makes us feel bad. A loss of a loved one. Things that seem like, you know what, life just ain't fair. And sometimes it's not. But yet, in those moments, you had hope for tomorrow. There was something in your life, there was a spark in your life, knew that the world was not going to end that day, no matter how bad you felt at the moment. That is joy, not happiness. Because if you're happy in those times, someone might say, you know what? I think you're a sociopath. So happiness and joy are different. You can be a non-believer and be happy. But I don't think a non-believer can truly know joy. But I know that a believer can. So do you understand more about difference between happiness and joy now? Because I know that every one of us, we've had joy in tough times. And there's things we've gone through, by golly, we ain't been happy about it. But we knew Jesus and we knew that he would get us through. And we took joy in that. People think we're crazy. No, we're not crazy. We just know Jesus. And so at a time when they needed joy, we get this wonderful event. So Luke chapter 2, verse 8 says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And this is what, this is the, the thing that kind of, shown on me this morning, kind of dawned on me. I never really thought about this at night. This happening at night. They're watching their field, uh, field uh, by night and we, we, you know, we kind of have an idea of, you know, the shepherds and, you know, we, we get that idea. We've seen that picture before, but at night, and it says, and an angel of the Lord, in verse 9, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. This is what got me. It was at night. The Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Is that not a picture of light coming into a dark world? I've never, I've never saw that before until this morning. When I was going over this and I, and I looked at that and I was like, oh man, what a great picture because it truly was light coming into the world. Light had finally shone in a dark and sinful world where a people were needing that light because darkness was all around. As a Christian, you know, these, these were supposed to be spiritual people. You know, they, they, uh, they, they, they were supposed to know the Lord. They, they heard the scriptures. They had this true and living God. And they had this legacy to live on. But man, didn't they need some joy? Didn't they need some light? Do you ever get that? Sometimes you just feel like you're being drugged down. You just feel like, you know, everything. Uh, the, you, just, you feel like you're just tired all the time just because of everything that's going around. And you need a light sometimes to shine around you. To say, you know what? Jesus is here. 
In this case, it literally happened. He's, it, he's shown around them. And here's the other thing. You know, they had not heard from a prophet of God from almost 400 years. And in that time, here's the wonderful thing. When you talk about light in the Old Testament, in many cases, when we trace those back, that was the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. The Shekinah glory that we read about it left the temple because the people had got so corrupt and were so sinful that God's glory left the temple. His light, His Shekinah glory, His visible glory left. And in the darkness of night, the Shekinah glory returned when Jesus was born. You know, I was thinking about that. Thinking about in our lives... When we are born again, that glory of the Lord shines on us. Don't you think so? But this glory, after 400 years, this light, this kind of glory dawned on them in the middle of the night. And they were afraid. And, you know, we don't know who this angel is. Perhaps it's Gabriel because Gabriel was the one who delivered the other messages. And I consider him the messenger angel. Because he's always the one that whenever there's something important to say, God sends him. And so, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But this angel came and stand there and they were filled with great fear. And in verse 10 it says, And the angel said to them, Fear not. And I think that's what Jesus says to us when, when we come to Him and, and we give Him our life. You know, we're scared because, you know, as a Christian, when you decide to, to make that commitment, say, you know what, Jesus, I've heard about you. Um, my pastor's uh, told me about you. or I've heard it from a friend or I saw it on a, a TV series. And Lord, my heart's breaking. I'm a sinner. I need to repent. And my goodness, I just need you, Lord. Come to my life. But you're scared because you're taking a leap of faith and you're, you're, you're diving into something new. You're, ex you're going to experience something new that all these other people had to go through at one time. But here you are. You're just like these shepherds. But God's light is shining on you. And He's telling you in that moment, fear not. Because, you know, even in the overwhelming fear, you know, I can, I can think of it myself. Think back to my own salvation experience. I mean, I've, I'm not going to go through the story. You know where I was. You know what happened. Even though I knew, I knew what I needed. And I knew, I, I, was, I knew I was accepting Jesus Christ right there. But I was still scared. I was a little bit afraid. But in that moment, as I was scared and I was accepting Christ as my Savior, I could, I could feel that. I could almost hear it say, fear not. There was joy in my life. But do you think I was happy about where I was at at the moment? No. And I was not happy about what was going on. My son had just died. I was not happy. But Jesus was talking to me and he said, fear not. And his light was shining around me. Just like it did you when you accepted Christ. Wherever you were and whatever you were going through. It was shining around you. And in that moment you probably weren't happy. Maybe some of you were. But I bet you found joy. Because I don't know anybody that's ever accepted Jesus Christ. And walked out of there. Man I shouldn't have done that. Because I tell you. When you accept Christ. Well you feel like you can walk on water. And see, that's, you know, I, I, I know the stories of some of us here. You know, and, and we, we come from some dark places. And maybe at the time, maybe, you know, we were not being happy. We were not in a happy place. But man, we found the Lord and we found joy in our life because joy allows you to keep on living even when things are bad. 
These people were living in a bad time. They were oppressed by everything around them, even themselves. They were oppressing themselves. And they needed that light. And here it was. It was shining on them. And God was saying, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Good news. It's where we get the word gospel from. Euangelion, the Greek word. But this good news, it was, it was a heralding word. To herald in good news. And it kind of changed when Jesus came on the scene. Because this was better news. This was a king that had been foretold. That had finally come. He said, I bring you good news. I bring you this kingly news. Of great joy. And I, I, love, I love the word that they use there for great in the Greek. It means mega. It means it's big. I was thinking of somebody, you know, that always uses the terms big and huge. <laughs> but this was big news. This was the biggest news ever. Jesus had come. And He didn't just come, He came to bring good news. The heralding of a king. You know, we, we get into this word and we start reading it and, and we experience the good news. We not only read it, but we experience it. Because we learn that somebody who was foretold ages ago who was going to save the world and save us has come. And we get to accept that king. He gave us a great gift. You know, he didn't have to leave glory, but he did. You know, the creator of the universe came and was born into this world. What a sacrifice on His behalf. That's all He did. He just kept sacrificing for us. You know, so many you know, people today, other religions, they want you to sacrifice for them. We serve a God who continually sacrificed for us. And so here He comes sacrificing again and He sends His Son to come in and save us all. I can't think of any better good news of mega joy. And it's interesting, I learned something new about that word joy today, because I always brush up Sunday mornings. So I, th I think it helps me keep my mind on the topic. But I learned that the way that that Greek word was used in that specific instance is that the word joy was actually, it was used in a way that was representing what it was talking about. Or who it was talking about. Who was it talking about? Jesus. So you could literally say right there in place of joy, you could say the Christ has come. I bring you good news of the Christ. I bring you good news of the Messiah. I bring you good news of Jesus. Jesus is joy. Jesus brings joy. And the way that they use that term mega, you also find it in Revelation as well. Mega. But it means very very big. You think of, uh, have you ever seen some of these big earth movers? You know, it's got these little people standing beside, them. they're about this tall and, it, you know, it's just, can't believe these things exist. We just think of bigger. We were talking about the universe one day. Talking about how big and expansive it is. Think bigger. 
That's what that word means. Mega joy. That's what came into the world. That's the light that shone in a dark world. That's the same light that shone on each of us when we have accepted Him. That very same light. And he said that this will be for all the people. Not just for some. Now see, here's the thing. Jesus came not just for one group of people, but for all people. Not all people would accept him, but he came for all. He was born into this world for all to shine a light Onto the dark souls of everybody who was here. That brings great joy. And the reason for all of it. For unto you is born this day. In the city of David. A Savior. Who is Christ the Lord. There's nothing else I need to add to that. Good news. Big joy. Mega joy. A light in the darkness. That's what we have. And that's what we can spread. We who are saved, we have that Holy Spirit within us. We are that light into the dark world. We can share this message with others, especially during the Christmas season. So let us share joy. Let us bring joy. He brings joy. But just like last week, I want to remind you of something, and this is it. Joy is only guaranteed when we know Him as Savior. So if you want joy in your life, you need to be talking to Jesus because he's the only one who's going to give it to you because he's the source. Let us thank our Savior today. Let us stand and have a closing prayer. Gracious Father, thank you so much for being this magnificent light into our life. Lord, we thank you for all that you had to do to come into this world in order to save it. Lord, every time I read it, and I hope that every time everybody else reads what you did, Lord, that it becomes more magnificent because we understand it better of what you did. And why people needed to be saved. Father we thank you. For the blessing. Of being able to receive that precious gift. Of salvation that you brought into the world. Lord and we're still thankful. That that gift still exists today. Even after 2000 years. Lord, and I'm thankful for every person here who has received that gift. And I pray that everybody here has received that gift. But Lord, if there's someone here who has not, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would come to you and that, that they would ask you for forgiveness. That you would forgive them. Lord, you, you, your word promises that you will. But Lord, we have to come to you in repentance and, and ask for that forgiveness. So that we can find that joy. Lord, I, I don't know if there's somebody here who, ha who doesn't know what joy really is. But Lord, I, I pray that they would accept you as the Lord of their life. So that they would know what true joy is. So that Lord, that when things are not going as they should. When life has just seemed like it's being unfair. That they still have something to hold on to. That all is not lost. Just like with these peoples 2,000 years ago who, who were at the end of their rope. 
and, and couldn't see any light. All of a sudden, in the darkness of night, a light shined all around and gave them hope once again. Lord, I pray that if there's somebody here who feels like that, Lord, I pray that you would come down on them. Lord, sh and shine that light on them. Lord, let them feel your presence. And Lord, I know that you will tell them to fear not, for I am here. Lord, I thank you that we're able to share this message and, and we're able to relish with each other the saving experience that you have brought to each of us. Father, I thank you. I pray that you would be with us the rest of this day. Lord, let us praise and glorify you in knowing in what you have done for us, each and every one of us. Thank you for your joy. And it's in your name that I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.